All right, uh, good evening uh, uh, and blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha to all of you and to all our participants. Um, so we are about to uh, begin our bi-weekly sutra discussion and uh, let us uh, uh, begin uh, this uh, bi-weekly sutra discussion by paying respect and homage to the Buddha. I recite in Namo Tassa three times together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa I pay my respect and homage to him, the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened Buddha. Uh, dear Venerable uh, <clears throat> bhikkhus and bhikkhunis and uh, friends in dhamma and also our friends who are watching us on facebook and youtube live it is a great joy for all of us to welcome uh, all the uh, venerable monks and nuns to our bi-weekly sutra discussion and uh, we also have some uh, lay devotees who join us on a Zoom platform. And we also have uh, people watching on Facebook and YouTube Live. So I would like to welcome all of you to this unique uh, discussion. And uh, I would like to introduce our uh, venerable monks and nuns to our audience. Uh, we have Bhante Vansananda joining us from Buffalo, New York, USA. And uh, then we have uh, Venerable Tridau joining us from Florida, USA. Actually, today is Venerable Tridau's birthday. We would like to wish a happy birthday. May all blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha be with you for long life, good health, happiness, peace of mind. And uh, we have Bhante Kamalasuri uh, joining us from Minnesota, USA. Uh, actually, Bhante Kamalasuri, we missed you for past two months. <laughs> you have been very busy. Uh, so it is a great joy to have you here today. And uh, then we have Venerable uh, Chanda Ananda joining us from Ottawa, Canada. This is your first time, Venerable Chanda Ananda. We are very glad to have you with us. Um, then we have Bhante Kusala uh, joining us uh, from here, our temple in Mississauga, Toronto, Canada. Uh, <clears throat> then we have uh, uh, Bhante Sunita uh, joining us uh, from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, then we have Venerable Saranapala uh, Thero joining us from Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Canada. Then we have Venerable Dhamma Dinna uh, uh, joining us from Virginia, USA. And then we have Venerable Digale Somawangsha joining us from Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Canada. Then we have uh, Bhante Ananda Kalubovila joining us from Cambridge, uh, Ontario, Canada. Then we have Venerable uh, Kotopala Sumedha Thero joining us from Ottawa, Canada. And I myself is Bhante Saranapala from Toronto, Canada. And actually we have uh, two Saranapalas and I just heard uh, Bhante Sunita's good friend from Austin, Texas. His name is, name is also Saranapala. 
So I think we are going to have three Salana Palas. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, past uh, uh, weeks, actually, you know, for us, uh, I think we have been very consistent uh, with our bi-weekly sutta discussion. The discussion we uh, virtually started um, in uh, 2021, and by end of January, we continued uh, to, uh, to have this unique discussion bi-weekly till this moment. And we have covered a lot of uh, uh, topics and issues, and we discussed a lot of Dhamma. And uh, time to time, we, I received the uh, questions from some lay people. And uh, uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, when we uh, talked about, uh, uh, you know, about the Buddha, how great he, he is, and uh, I actually call Bante Ji to see whether he can join us today. But he said he's preparing for a monastic retreat, so he cannot join. Uh, so then I, uh, we, we wanted to have another discussion on the same topic because it was a great discussion. Lay people really enjoyed it. And even some monks also suggested we should have another discussion on the same topic with Bante Ji. Uh, but uh, he could not join, so therefore I uh, took a question from the uh, lay audience. Uh, he said, Bhante, can you please uh, talk about or discuss uh, uh, what do you do when somebody uh, treats you badly? <laughs> I said, this is a kind of <laughs> uh, common, common experience the majority of the people have. And I'm pretty sure even the venerable monks and nuns also have the same issue. Maybe, you know, you, uh, when you deal with the society, the people, uh, sometimes, of course, there's someone always who uh, doesn't like you, maybe who treats you badly. Uh, it, this is the nature of the, the society, the world. Uh, even the Buddha himself had some, his, some of his own disciples. Uh, the famous character was uh, Devadatta, <laughs> who <laughs> uh, he was a ban uh, Buddha's uh, cousin in, uh, uh, and plus uh, uh, the brother-in-law and plus the disciple. Uh, uh, and so he continued to treat the Buddha badly. And I think we have a lot of examples and even some other monks and how even lay people uh, uh, treated the Buddha uh, badly. Uh, there are a few stories like that. And, and also uh, Jesus Christ also had the same thing, how he was badly treated and uh, all the spiritual leaders. Even today we see the same thing. So now um, I think uh, we can begin with either a story from uh, the, the Buddha's uh, li lifetime, or uh, you also could uh, uh, tell us a story, you know, if you had any, uh, uh, so you could just uh, talk about it and how you uh, uh, faced that particular uh, situation and how it helped you. And also, um, uh, maybe you have your own unique uh, uh, way of handling all these personal issues, social issues. You know, uh, I think nobody uh, can escape from this uh, uh, criticism, uh, bad treatment, because we all are social beings, live in the society. At, it could be at the temple or at the church, at the synagogue, or at the workplace, you know, how sometimes your uh, colleague at work uh, uh, treats you badly or how your own manager or CEO or, or even sometimes within the family, it could be a brother or sister or it could be someone else. Uh, so uh, these are the social issue, issues that we all have. And uh, so I would like to uh, kindly and respectfully invite our venerable monks and nuns. Uh, if you have 
any story, personal story or a story from the uh, textbook, Buddha's lifetime, uh, feel free to tell this story and how Buddha himself uh, uh, handled that particular situation. Or if you had any uh, bad situation, how you faced it and how you uh, made it through and then what happened after. Maybe this is a unique moment for all of us to uh, share uh, our own experiences with our audience here on Zoom platform and also on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, I, I, I don't want to uh, pick anyone else, uh, as, you know, single out, but uh, it, it, you can uh, raise your hand. So I see Venerable Trudeau raised his hand, but before that, let me introduce uh, Venerable uh, uh, Sister uh, Kema uh, is, uh, has just joined from India, I guess, India, well, I know normally you travel. And also we have uh, Venerable, Poland. sorry? Poland. Poland, oh, you're from, yeah, okay, this time from Poland, They're welcome. And also I think we have uh, both Sarana, this is the Sarana Pala. <laughs> is uh, maybe from uh, Texas. So anyways, uh, so welcome and very much Trudeau. So uh, happy birthday to you. Now, what's in your mind? Uh, thank you. Uh, salutations to all the venerables, most venerables, uh, bhikkhus, bhikkhunis, and ayas. Uh, Sister Kema, I love all of your teachings on YouTube. I'm very <laughs> inspired. Uh, I wanted to raise my hand first since I'm the youngest one here and I am going on my seventh year as a monk and be, you know, I, I, I just, I experiment with a lot of things and TikTok being one of them. And then slowly I, I blew up. Um, I was just, I'm just being me. I'm, I'm being true and I'm being me the way how I teach to the world. And slowly I, I blew up and then I became this, this, uh, internet, uh, celebrity monk sensation the mm. good thing about it is that i'm able to spread the dhamma to all of the young people out there because uh, mm. we have this thing with secularism and the dangers of secularism and so catching them while they're young uh, is a good thing as it pertains to sila the practice of sila in the threefold training the the not so good thing is that now I know what it's feel like to be Justin Bieber. Now I, I know what it feels like <laughs> to be some of these people of celebrity of celebrity status. You know, we, we watch Hollywood. We see these famous people, Johnny Depp being the latest uh, sensation about the defamation of character lawsuit. And so I, I became this billboard of not just praise, but also blame. And the Buddha taught us that no one exempt praise or blame. And if you have fame, prepare for the defame, the defamation. Mm. And it has humbled me in my life so far, humbled me to have gone through all the different stages of bows and arrows. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can imagine me sitting, meditating, and all of a sudden these bows and arrows come shooting down similar to when the Buddha sat and a elephant was charging at him. I had to learn by and through all of your teachings, all of the senior members here and all of your teachings, um, how to remain nobly silent when I had nothing good to say. And since I'm young and only 35, you know, sometimes my mind, my psychological mind, like to pretend like I am still, uh, you know, teenage, and I like to respond in a very te teenage way. But it is the exact same monastic robes that I wear with all of you that tells me you, you don't want to accumulate any more karma. <laughs> yeah. You have to be mindful and practice right speech. Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it beneficial? And is it kind? And is it is the time of the response uh, ideal at this time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, again, all sorts of praise and blame, and I anticipate future praise and, and, and blame. Uh, so I just wanted to be the first one to exemplify myself as the object and the subject 
uh, you know, that even monks don't exempt such praise or blame. And we must walk the path mm. um, as much as possible to the rules of the Vinaya. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, nowadays, it, it so how, how did I deal with it? And how do I teach others to deal with praise and blame and when they're unkind to you? Well, two things. Number one, don't worry because mm -hmm. don't worry if they don't like you because they <laughs> barely like themselves first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Number two is that um, the rotten fruit will simply fall on its own. Uh, we all know <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Venerable Saranampala actually posted something that was very inspiring on his page uh, earlier this year. And it talks about, you know, how when people don't know you and they judge you. Yeah. And, it, and the philosophy behind that post by Venerable Saranampala was, you know, it's kind of like dogs. Where, uh, dogs bark at people that they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so even even in Thailand and Vietnam, the word dogs means very heavy, but is, is no different when people behave as if, uh, you know, in the rebirth realm of animals. So using these philosophies, we realize that, you know, back to central to our practice and to be unmoved by anything that is good, <clears throat> or bad. Thank you so much for letting me uh, take the stage. Yeah. <clears throat> No, thank you, Venerable uh, Trudeau. You know, of course, don't worry. And I think that's a very wonderful uh, the metaphor. Uh, uh, normally, dogs bark at the people if they don't know who they are. So sometimes if people criticize you or, or treat you badly, uh, you know, it, it shows that they don't know who exactly you are. So I think people sometimes misjudge, right? So uh, we don't need to worry if we... If we uh, if you know who we are, if we, I think we have to look at our intention. If you had no intention to hurt anyone, and if people criticize you for that, then no need to worry. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> Maybe truth will uh, come into light as we keep going, right? Then people later on regret. So thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to tell a story? Um, I know Bante Kusula, you were going to uh, tell a story uh, when we were having tea, uh, but okay, uh, hold on. I see just now, but, uh, Venerable Chandan on the raised his hand, <laughs> okay? Uh, yes, Chandan. yes, Bante, uh, I'd like to share one uh, story. Yeah. Happened um, many years ago in Sri Lanka. Yeah. <clears throat> there was one, uh, I met one uh, young, man in uh, one of the monasteries I happen to live and uh, I remember uh, when he saw me he behaved in some very arrogant haughty manner uh -huh. so normally in Sri Lanka monks are well respected and especially in that uh, monastery uh, all, all monks were well respected uh, by lay people and uh -huh. this particular person it happened uh, kind of uh, some sort of an uh, opposite manner so whenever he uh, saw me I, 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 how it felt in my um, experience was he became very haughty and kind of egotistic uh, he became proud for nothing and all his body language facial expressions uh, showed that to me and naturally when I experienced such a thing uh, my habitual reaction was to match it in a reactive way so if he can be haughty and egotistic I also can be because I also have certain things uh, to be proud of. so th th that was my conditioning uh -huh. some years ago but somehow with mindfulness I resisted that urge uh. And I started to think, so wh what's the meaning of this? Uh, so I interpreted the situation as normally if a person becomes that kind of uh, haughty or uh, very proud for nothing, normally that happens because of the inferiority yeah. of the person. Mm -hmm. um, um, 
actually uh, on the on the on the uh, periphery on the face level people show that they are very important uh, they are very powerful etc but deep in their psyche they feel the emptiness some uh, feeling of inadequacy feeling of insecurity so i understood the situation but it is it is not easy to uh, it is not easy not to react yeah <laughs> uh, somehow i control and yeah. what i did was uh, so actually i can explain uh, that about that person he was young beautiful handsome and uh, only problem he has was he was doing a blue collar job unfortunately in sri lanka uh, blue collar jobs are somewhat frowned upon um, i regret that i don't know from where it came to uh, beautiful sri lanka some uh-huh. people do that uh some people do that so i think this was the only problem he had uh, so then i slowly um, mindfully uh, i started to talk with him as if nothing happened uh-huh. normally I, i didn't like to talk, talk about uh, the, this politics and that kind of stuff because it was not so ethical mm. uh, but uh, that was the only thing i can uh, had the conversation with him because he did not know spiritual stuff uh-huh. the temple to meet one of the monks <clears throat> after some time when i started this political talk uh, I, i i paid him uh, all the attention mm-hmm. he was a very good listener for him i was available for him and that experience slowly changed the man because actually um, i think he would have never uh, thought that uh, a monk like me i, I don't know that is what how i interpret the situation he never yeah. that i would uh, he mean something in my life so i gave him some meaning i gave him my attention after some time he became a very slowly he became a very good friend of mine he became <laughs> a great experience in my life uh. that's a, that's a great story very much jandananda i think you know sometimes when people show a big ego of course uh, you also it's a nat- natural thing right we human beings we are not enlightened yet we feel like uh, reacting to that situation but it's a self realization why do i have to react reacting to such thing is a way of pulling into their shoes right <laughs> so we don't want to uh, uh, be like them and we have to be patient and show our strength So thank you so much for sharing that uh, good story and we also have uh, venerable Shanta Sobana uh, joining us uh, uh, from Los Angeles welcome and now we see venerable Sarana <laughs> uh, from uh, uh, Texas right yeah, yeah. okay uh, so welcome and uh, uh Bante Kusala it's your turn now to tell that story you did not want to tell me when we were having tea <laughs> well Thank you, Bhante. Um, Namami Sangha. So this is actually how the Buddha reacted when someone scolded him. And, uh, and this story uh, stays, you know, stays rent-free in my mind <laughs> yeah. all the time. Uh, this Brahmin called As- Akosaka Bharadwaja, yeah. he heard that, you know, someone was, someone from his clan, clan um was ordained under gautama buddha so he was very displeased he was angry he thought that this should not have happened and he thought that the buddha did something wrong to a person from his clan so he went to the buddha straight forward and started using abusive language mm. uh to put the buddha down and um, say things you know that are very um, displeasing and harsh um and when the brahmin finished the buddha calmly asked you know uh, do you get visitors in your home mm-hmm. uh, friends and family coming to see you the brahmin said yes master gotama uh, time to time there are visitors coming to see me mm-hmm. so do you also prepare food for them the brahmin said yes i do prepare a nice uh, food for them um and the buddha asked you know what if they don't accept your food um that they they you know they leave without eating your food and the brahmin 
said, you know, I will enjoy the food that I prepared. So it belongs to me. Mm. So the Buddha said, well, just the same way, uh, all that abusive language you used uh, does not belong to me. It is all yours. Mm. Um, and, and the Brahmin was surprised and he, he asked, you know, how is it that, you know, I, I use such abusive language and you remain calm? And the Buddha said, well, I am anger, anger free. For someone who is anger free, you can't really bring up anger in that person. Uh, and, you know, I have abandoned anger. I have uh, stopped reacting to anger and I have seen the root cause of anger and how it arises. And that way I have become free from anger conditioning. So as a result, uh, whatever you said didn't affect me at all. And it appears that it is something that you have to work on in your own mind and you can uproot it yourself through uh, patience and some practice and dedication. So the Brahmin thereupon uh, was so pleased about the Buddha's miraculous patience uh, in the crowd and remaining uh, calm. And he took refuge in the Buddha. Uh, he also uh, very soon became an enlightened monk, you know, uh, after learning the teachings and practicing and living uh, the life of a monk, he finally learned to live free from anger, which means he became someone who is free from suffering. Mm. So um, when someone scolds us uh, with so many reasons, we need to also uh, think of how the Buddha reacted at that point. Did he react at all? Or he remained calm, you know, all those uh, really charged words came toward the Buddha, but, you know, they hit on his body and fell off at the foot and didn't bother him at all. Mm. And I, coupled with this, I think of how the Buddha said, you know, Porana Metam Atula, you know, this is coming from the old days. Um, those who speak little are abused. Those who speak so much are abused. Those who remain uh, silent are also abused. So there is no one in the world who is not abused, who is not insulted. I think Venerable Tridao mentioned this briefly. So um, there's no one free from um, bad treatment. Mm -hmm. And different, you know, conditioning brings people to certain places. But if we can um, leave, leave these people um, in the best pieces without breaking them, it's best, you know. We all need to practice that. I understand it's very difficult, you know, when someone, when you are in that situation, uh, when you have so much of details to handle, sometimes our nature is to react. I think Venerable Chandananda from Mattumagal also said something like it's, it's our nature to uh, join that energy and prove ourselves, uh, ourselves right. Mm. Um, so I think I also would like to bring up this um, Hindu story, if we have the time. Um, maybe I can hold hold it for later, uh, so that other vendors can speak. Yeah, so, that's right. Uh, you yeah, can yeah. tell the story, uh, and yeah. if no one else is going to tell a story. I will invite <laughs> you. <laughs> Anyways, you know, uh, you have you, you told the beautiful story, it's the famous story, and I think now the one. A question must, must be arising. You know, we we are we are not Buddha. <laughs> we are not Buddha uh, to tolerate all this. Now, of course, Buddha is done. You know, he he finished his journey. Uh, he became enlightened. He became free, completely free from all this. Now, uh, when we face this kind of difficult circumstances in our life, maybe we can try to act like the Buddha, <laughs> right? <laughs> act like the Buddha. Uh, and also, maybe these are the people uh, who are chasing us from the past memorial, who had been our en enemies or, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe unfriendly people. 
maybe they we we mistreated them now they're chasing us but through mindfulness practice i think that's the one word that uh, i hear from wearable uh, priscilla and uh, wearable Trudeau and wearable chandananda you know the mindfulness being mindful of this oh my god this person is criticizing me or doing this to me, mistreating me badly now why should i engage in that like if we accept that criticism and then it's going to be ours right so that's why that's what buddha did you know at the at that story he did not accept his treatment of uh, abuses or, uh, or other things so anyway so we have uh verbal ananda kalabovila from uh cambridge raised his hand verbal ananda what's in your mind uh, thank you, Bhante, and thank you all the Sangha and uh, Bhikkhus and Bhikkhunis. Uh, so I wanted to share a bit of uh, incidents that I had from my lay life. before. After I became a monk, like uh, Bhante mentioned, everyone treated me super nice. No one uh, became harsh to me. But uh, I spent bulk of my lifetime until I was 35 as a lay person. And especially when I was young, I was a really uh, bad uh, lay person. Bad as in I did a lot of uh, bad things, especially with uh, girls. So I've been going out with a lot of girls and uh, <laughs> naturally, <laughs> naturally you get uh, all these uh, fames and defames like uh, Johnny Depp. And uh, so I have the fair share of uh, that. So uh, one thing uh, I would like to uh, share, which happened, uh, I think from the younger days, I had this quality of uh, not being too bothered by what other would uh, uh, how others would treat me and uh, I remember when I was getting married I uh, forgot I have forgotten to send an invitation to one of my relatives so mm -hmm. for that she has gotten uh, upset with me and my uh, parents because I, it was a, a mistake mm -hmm. so when uh, her son was getting married she did not send me an invitation and said uh, because you did not send me I'm not going to send this like a tit for tat so then um, I, I never hold grudges with anyone. To date, I don't have a single enemy. Maybe people are angry at me, but I'm not angry at any person. So I went there. Uh, I was pre getting prepared to go to that wedding anyway. And my uh, wife at the time, she was asking, don't you have any shame when you are not invited clearly to go there and, uh, you know, uh, 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 go there and uh, go into that wedding. So I went there anyway. And uh, what I figured out was that when I went there, uh, she felt really sorry about what she did, the way she responded, and the whole thing uh, became very emotional and then uh, hugging and all that. So uh, a lot of people are asking me this question, don't you have shame to do that? So I personally think uh, if someone is mad at you and treating uh, bad, bad at you, uh, having that uh, component of shame is not going to do a lot of uh, good. If you just yeah. leave that shame part out and then open, uh, go there with an open hand, uh, you would uh, uh, you would find the situation to be totally toppled and the people would uh, behave uh, in, a, in a different manner. And I have a couple of other incidents which happened which were more life-threatening, like literally life-threatening. So then I was uh, going out with this uh, lady and uh, well, she was engaged and I sort of went in between uh, her fiance and uh, her and then uh, uh, it, it went it became a issue and that that guy wanted to kill me like literally kill me and then uh, he was trying to kill me and uh, at one point he he almost uh, sent someone to stab me with a knife like literally and then I figured out when uh, that whole incident was happening it was like a James Bond movie but I was very peaceful inside I knew that uh, there's something that that person is reacting this way because he has a fair reason in his mind maybe it's not fair on my end but if I try to apply uh, go into his shoes and uh, see from his perspective what he does is perfectly fair so that way also I also found that uh, you don't have to keep grudges because everyone has a fair story of why they are doing what they are doing. So mm -hmm. I think with these two qualities, uh, having no shame and, uh, uh, you know, trying to have put, put uh, me, myself into their shoes and uh, see why they are doing what they are doing, I think that way I, I still uh, do not have uh, any difficulty in letting go of a grudge. So... I think, uh, again, uh, it tallies with what uh, Bhante Kusala said about when, when a person is uh, mad at you, it's like uh, you offer them food and if you don't accept it, it's just uh, uh, wasted. And the more important thing is, sometimes these grudges, the unfair treatments, they happen because people, they think that we would also react the same way. But if we react 
with an open hand, uh, with an open uh, uh, hand uh, and, and to, uh, with uh, kindness and calmness, they would uh, try to react in a totally different manner. So I just wanted to leave that message. Yeah, no, that, that's a great message, uh, Venerable Ananda. Uh, I, I think when somebody uh, treated you badly, and uh, if you hold grudges on that person, and it's, it's a way of you know taking this uh, negativity uh, to next chapter of your life, or maybe even the next lifetime, right? So we have to uh, uh, get rid of it right here now. And uh, some, of course, some people might say it's, it's a shame that you uh, uh, did the handshake with that person who mistreated you badly. But you should, see, that is going to harm and cause more harm to us. But when we do the handshaking, we finish the job there. Now we make peace. So that's the greatest story. Thank you, Venerable Ananda. And I saw Venerable uh, Sister Kema. Uh, <laughs> you were actually <laughs> waving hands. I think you did not raise your hand there. I did, it, I did. <laughs> like, okay. Now, uh, what's in your mind? Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, my teacher, Bunty Vimal Ramsey, yeah. he's. Um, always challenging us to actually go out and practice what we're learning and um, we've had quite a few adventures over the years but um, at one point I had a family issue with uh, my sister who was very against how I was handling things in my mother's estate this is before I was just before I was uh, ordained and, um, but I had been studying for a while and listening to some things. And there's a lesson in, um, I was trying to find this right here for you. There was a lesson that we teach at the end of our retreats that I think is really great. Mm. And um, I always challenge people to go out and actually try this. One of the things we were trying to find at the end of our retreats to systematically use, and I think it's the, um, I want to say, oh, Kakachupama Sutta. There you go, Kakachupama Sutta, yeah. number 21. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a lesson that we are challenged to try to remember to always use. And this incidentally comes from the lesson about the monk who, I can't remember his name, but there was a monk who was ready to go and leave the meditation school the Buddha had in India. And he was teaching people, we say it was a Buddhist uh, meditation school that was moving around India, what the Buddha was <laughs> teaching. That's how I explain it to, you know, Americans and things. And they want to know, uh, you know, uh, about the measurable outcome of the teaching. And people want to know today, what is the measurable outcome of this teaching if I learn to do meditation? And so there was the story of the monk. I'll show you this first, okay? And the monk was ready to go and teach. And he told the other monks, I'm ready to go to teach. And I don't remember the name of the place he was going. It was like the Bada Bada country. And it was, everyone was fearful of it. Then people were very mean there. And the monk was going to go, you, one of you is going to remember this story I'm telling. And so the monks were very concerned this monk was going to go there and he was going to try and teach the Buddhist teaching. And so they ran away, of course, to the Buddha. And they said, you have to come and talk to him. He shouldn't go there. We all know he shouldn't go there. Well, the Buddha came and he took the monk aside. He said, where are you going to go? He said, oh, to the Bada Bada country, whatever it was. And it, there, I, he says, you know, they're really mean there. What will you do if they throw a stone at you? And he yeah. said, well, I will turn around and I will forgive them and I will continue to teach them. But what will you do if they hit you? Mm. Ah, well, I, I will have to forgive them because they have suffering and I will have to come back and teach them. But what will you do if they break your arm? And it kept going like this and hitting him and hurting and, you know, sticking you with sticks and then cutting you with a knife. And then what if you kill you? It's okay because I will forgive them as I'm dying because I, it's important for me to come and teach you this. So what was it he was talking about was in the Kakachupama Sutta. Because in the Kakachupama Sutta, there is a measurable outcome that the Buddha expects 
accepted from his monks if they were practicing what he was teaching. And it had to do with the Brahma Viharas, the breathing meditation and the Brahma Viharas. And it was about how we should be training. But training is not just sitting. It is not just at the temple or the retreat. It is in life, using it all the time, what he was teaching. So he told them this, when others talk to us, their speech may be timely or untimely. True or false, gentle or harsh, connected with good or connected with harm, filled with loving kindness or with inner hatred towards us. We need to train ourselves this way. My mind will remain unaffected and I will say no words that are evil or untrue. I shall be compassionate for others' welfare. I shall keep my mind filled with loving kindness without ever entertaining thoughts of anger or hatred. I I shall radiate loving kindness to everyone all the time, to all beings as to myself. I shall radiate and pervade all beings with a mind that is abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without anger or hostility. That is how we should need to practice. This is the lesson from the Kakachupama. And what we're told when we're practicing the Brahma Viharas that are turned turning into metta, moving into karuna, moving into joy, and moving into equanimity. We're learning to teach people how to let go of the ill will with the metta, and then the thoughts of cruelty, and then the thoughts of discontent, and then the thoughts of aversion. And we need to be practicing this all the time in life. And I'm kind of very precocious. I think you know that. Okay. And I'm always just trying to do this no matter what. So if somebody's coming at me, first thing I remember is they're probably yelling at themselves, especially now. If they're yelling at me, they're yelling at themselves. If most of the time, that because they're frustrated they didn't teach me to do what they wanted me to do or because they're angry and suffering in the whole world and the way everyone went through covid most of the people that I was counseling, this was true. We would find out the person, like the mother and the son who had to move back in together, they were fighting with each other. And actually, the mother was only yelling because she was so frustrated. And then the son was yelling because he was so frustrated. And that the answer was to go out and live what the Buddha is teaching and not just think of it as I go to hear it at the temple or I just go to the retreat or I just sit in a closet and I do my meditation or in a corner. It has to go out. It has to go to the face of the people. And I've had a lot of fun with it because I'm crazy. <laughs> and so if you come to me, I'm probably going to just turn around and say, you know, I know exactly what you mean. And I've been in situations like that too. Let me tell you about the time. And I turn it around on them and I take them on a ride. And by the time we're finished, we're ready to go have tea. We're ready to share something or like this other person just said, listen to them we're ready to do that but getting to calm them down to immediately take it as an opportunity to turn it around and remember that we are ascending to the directions by this time most of us are sending to the directions to the six directions and we're playing a game of lighting up the world for those people in all different directions and if they come okay let them come so that's, a, that's the situation that I try to help the students. And some of them get all excited when they finally try it. And then they come back and say, oh, I did this totally different with my family or with somebody at school or a teacher or whatever. And this is where, I'm sorry, I have to yeah. keep smiling because this is where the Buddha is really teaching yeah. and it really reaches out and it changes situations. It changes employment situations. It changes everybody around these people because we're teaching these people to 
put off a new kind of frequency. That's what you and I are all doing. If we're teaching them how the Buddha was talking to his monks and we're rereading those suttas to them, they're beginning to understand they have a frequency. We all have a frequency. If we're smiling, we're putting off a, a lightened mind and a sharper awareness. If we're frowning, we're putting a darker, downer thing. And we, you know, we may feel it's important to be official and holy and very you know correct and everything in ceremonies that's true but boy you need to be at the door and you need to ask them how everything's going at home and you need to find out how it's going down the street and how their things are going on for them all the time you need to really get down and be that way with them and you know uh venerable trudeau he was talking about you know how sometimes maybe we don't have enough nuns and monks and if we don't, we need to be looking right at the problem and talking openly about this, not as a secret conversation, not ever telling younger monks that we can't talk about this. I'm ready to talk about it. Last week, I had a whopper. I've got cancer. There you go. I've got cancer and we're still trying to figure out where exactly the home base and the site is. And the doctor couldn't figure out. He said, I've got cancer. And I said, really? And he waited, the surgeon sat there, he said, he waited. And he said, you've got cancer and this is probably multiple myeloma and it's a complicated one because you've got lesions all over your skeleton. I said, well, why don't we, what you gonna do? You can't take the whole skeleton out. And he said, but you know, you're gonna be, you maybe should just go and write a book. I said, no, I'm not gonna go hide from this. And he, he said, but you know, you're terminal now. I looked at him and I said, you know what? So are you. He said, you know, you're going to have to go through treatment. And that poor man sat there. And you know what I said to him? I know all about chemotherapy. I know all about radiation. And honey, I already lost my hair. <laughs> so he just sat there and looked at me. And I said, how can I be upset about this? None of you can tell me exactly what's going on. And if you tell me I've got 10 weeks or you tell me you got, you know, 10 months, you tell me you got a year. You know, I know lots of people that didn't listen to you people and they're still alive five, six, seven years afterwards. You don't listen to the doctor if he tells you how old you are or how far you're going to go. And for, seven, for heaven's sakes, if somebody ever stands there and says, you know, you've got a condition, you're old. Just look and say, honey, you're going to be there too if you're not. So don't worry about it. <laughs> but, Actually, you know, this week has really been a whopper. My it, son called me. He said he had cancer right here, had it cut off, was having a fit. I said, sweetheart, you don't even know what's, <laughs> you're really <laughs> lucky. You know, I didn't tell him about this, but I'm telling you right now, this just means about nothing to me because I'm having fun teaching people about what the Buddha taught. Well, that's what and I they're mean. learning it. Yeah. And yeah, when they go out on the street and they meet anybody, I need them to be able to understand that this thing about how should we train is real in the Kakachupama Sutta. Go <laughs> read it again, read it to your people. Yeah, thank those are actually beautiful teachings. This. Those are beautiful mm -hmm. teachings coming to us. Thank you so much for uh, uh, shedding more lights on, on this topic from the Kakachupama Sutra and also the, the famous story of Puna, you know. That's it, it's That's Puna. It. <laughs> and I went to see Puna's, uh, what was left of Puna. I went to see his, um, <laughs> right. Uh, they found it and they're yeah. fixing it. And it's uh, in a part of India near where I was. They're yeah, actually they found it. Yeah, so that's and, a beautiful story. Uh, that's a, that I think uh, you know, uh, uh, Verbal's uh, sister Kema, you actually share a lot of uh, life skills, beautiful life skills uh, based on the Dhamma, how we can handle the tough situations in our life. And uh, I know you have more stories <laughs> to tell us, uh, whole new stories, okay? So, so now, uh, <laughs> I, I love you know how, how you even smile and laughing you know this is how it should be it should be friendly uh, uh, so we have a variable uh, Shanta Sobana from Los Angeles raised his hand so I'm pretty sure variable Shanta Sobana you have a beautiful story to share with us 
Um, thank you very much, Venerable Sirs. And uh, uh, it, actually, it is a very, uh, very interesting topic today. Thank you for this uh, topic. And uh, because when it comes to the bad, that uh, we have to first figure out uh, what we mean by bad. Yeah. Because for us, maybe it is bad as monks, but for lay people, maybe that is the best for them. And, uh, and according to the culture and the traditions also, uh, while we're traveling, maybe they try to treat us the best way. Maybe it's not going to appropriate for us uh, according to our, our environment. So somehow that uh, I, I mostly used to practice uh, Aikido with uh, some of my teachers and I got some of best lessons for my uh, personal life. In that lesson, they, because the very principle of Aikido is that uh, whoever criticize you, mentally or physically abuse you, and it's going to be a great opportunity for you to grow. And it's it going mm. to be a great opportunity for you to, to, to become better. And one of my uh, teacher, the Tadashi Komenoi, gave me a very beautiful lesson. He told me one day that, remember, when you put the cow down next to the rose tree, and the, within few days that the flower has, uh, the, the tree has ab uh, ability to absorb that all the, the, the good things from that cow dung and yeah. then will be, give a very beautiful flower. Yeah. So that was, uh, you know, one of the best lesson for my life in every day wherever I go and whoever that uh, uh, give me a hard time. And the very first thing I always look, it's, it's kind of like a good opportunity for me. And I have one student close by me one day, it was very summertime, uh, like five years ago. Uh -huh. I went to his shop one day, like around uh, 2, 2 p.m. And when I opened the door, he got so mad and he started to blame to me, you know, and without any reason. And uh, then I apologized him, you know, I, I told I, I didn't mean, you know, to do any wrong or I didn't mean to disrespect you. I just came to buy something. But he didn't listen to me, so somehow I apologized. I came back, and then the very next day I went back, and uh, and that day he was a little bit cooled down. So I asked, "So what happened to you yesterday?" <laughs> <laughs> so then he told me, "Oh, I'm very sorry. You know, I was so busy, and I went through something else. And right away you came and wearing uh, something totally different, and you, uh, <laughs> you know, I never saw someone like this, and I got <laughs> so you know unbalanced and." I said it is okay, and then I start to talk with him. Now he is one of my best friend, and uh, he is one of my good student. And when I go to prison, uh, one of the important thing, because you know this time is very precious for all of us around the world, and a lot of people watch this. And I, somehow I always try to to bring something that can apply each and every one. You know, so when I go to prison, most of the time they don't ready to accept us. You know, they always criticize us. They always, you know, treat them us badly and they don't want to welcome us. One day uh, with my, when one of my students, I asked, what's going on? Why, why it happened to you like this way? Why you treat me like this? Then he told me, oh, I don't believe you. Uh, mm -hmm. I told, I don't want to, be, I don't expect that. You don't need to believe me, you know? And uh, then one of the important thing I learned because when it come to mental factors in the Buddha's teachings in the in the Abhidhamma and uh, regarding unwholesome thoughts, there are about 14 unwholesome thoughts. And out of that 14, there are three unwholesome thoughts. Without that three unwholesome thoughts, there is no way that something that uh, unwholesome act can happen. That one is the shamelessness and the other one is the, the fearlessness for wrong things. The other, the major important thing is restlessness. Mm. Because without restlessness, there is no way that unwholesome th things can happen out mm. of our bodily, verbally or mentally actions. So when, when someone treat me you know, in a bad way, that is one of the major thing I always remember because that person go through some kind of restlessness. Mm. 
So, and uh, other thing is uh, when I was in school with our great teacher, Koswati Ariyamala Nayakatero, and one of the, the major part he taught me, oh, Sandra, remember, be professional. No? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, as monks, you know, be professional, see how the, in, the, in the history, you know, how the, how the elders, how the, the great, great enlightened masters handle the situations. So don't take it personal, just be professional. It is not your job. <laughs> just be professional and try to handle that. Yeah. And that was something, you know, it's, it's a, you know, when we travel around the world, we every day, you know, especially when I go to prison and sometimes when I go to LAPD and we have to talk to people and sometimes officers give, you know, opportunity for us. Do you want to talk to that guy because he not listen to us? We don't want to, you know, mess up his life. You want to try? You know, sometimes I go and I say hi and they don't care about that. But when I don't take it personal, you know, and I, when I have the, com, uh, the compassion that because that person go through something, maybe we never understand that. We don't, we don't have any idea about it. So when we have the, we hold it to compassion and we hold it to loving kindness. And that way, when we look, and I think not only the humans, even the animals will, will accept that. Even the trees as a, uh, that uh, uh, everyone knows nowadays that uh, this all the unnatural things even has ability to to connect with the the our deeper the vibration come from the heart. Mm. So so what we think maybe it is more uh, give a effect than that our this outside behavior. Mm. So that means mm. our intention. Mm. So when our intention become genuine. I think that even though we go through hard time in the ordinary life, by the time that's going to give us a great opportunity. Another thing is finally that uh, sometimes that uh, people treat us badly. It's for the moment, maybe we take it as bad, but by the time that's going to be the best time for us, best opportunity for us, mm -hmm. you know? So as, uh, uh, as children, when we came to temple, we didn't know anything. And uh, we went through hard time because our high priest, you know, gave a hard time to us. <laughs> you know, when we go to school, but uh, when we look back, and that was the most beautiful turning point in our life. Yeah. You know? So that that when we look that, and and I I always think, uh, and today wherever I go, and if I meet people, and sometimes you know, I always uh, interfere with these children. And sometimes they, they treat us badly because they don't want, they, they want to get the social validation around them and they want to keep the, their own ideology and they, they want to show that they, they are kind of like, uh, don't accept us. So, but when I think about to being professional and look at how that uh, the, the history how during the Buddha's time and all other enlightened masters, how they handle the situation. That's mm. one thing. I think this will uh, help for each and everyone who ever listened. This is the rule through the martial art. And uh, especially when I practice the acupuncture, if there mm. is uh, that uh, kind of like uh, pain or something come, we don't touch that place. But there is something. Accept it with the respect. Mm. So that is the that is the bottom line in my life personally. Whoever criticized me, you know, whoever treat me badly, that is the first rule I always apply. Well, these are these are beautiful, beautiful stories, you know. Uh, I I think Venerable uh, Shantasovan, uh, as you said, uh, talked about the cow dung, right? Uh, it yes. reminded me of a of a the, the title of a book of, uh, written by a famous monk who ordered this truckload of dung. <laughs> and and also I think as we were talking about professionalism, right? I think the Buddha was the most professional <laughs> person. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think these are great lessons to uh, learn. Uh, from these conversations and thank you so much and I know you, you have more to share with us uh, now this pro uh, being professional even as a as monk and I think um, sometimes not being uh, enlightened 
there is a natural tendency to react, right? <laughs> Even to raise our voice. But at that time, being mindful of that, it, you know, will uh, help you. Uh, like when you engage, uh, this engagement is going to bring a lot of suffering. More engagements, more sufferings. No engagement, no suffering. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, okay. Uh, next, uh, we have Bhante Kamalasuri from Minnesota, USA. Bhante Kamalasuri, it's amazing to see you after a long time. Now, uh, what's your uh, idea about today's uh, topic? Yeah, actually, the, I was thinking about why do people treat badly to other people? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, that is the thing I was, uh, wanted to share with you. Uh -huh. Within my experience, mostly people do that because of uh, mistake and misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Because of mistakes and mis uh, misunderstanding. Most, mm -hmm. I think mostly the 70% it happening like that way. Mm -hmm. But there, there was no special reason, but by mistakely, uh, by misunderstandingly, they do it. Mm. Uh, the other part is sometimes it is uh, some people have that habit it is their habit <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is their habit that is the way they that is their lifestyle and that is the way they they think and they treat to other people they, then uh, we have to be uh, facing about them because uh, it is their habit. It is their nature. Uh, maybe it has come from the sansara, sansaric, uh, because of the, their karmic force. Mm. Yeah, it is happening. Then we have to be uh, patient and we have to see. It. We have we have to be kindly to that because mm -hmm. it is like a sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is ki kind of sick in life. Yeah then they have to take them as uh, sick people. Yeah, uh, the mentally and uh, yeah. There's the other thing. The, I think the few people in this society, they want to hurt to other people. Ah. Yeah, they want to hurt to other people. So they treat badly to the people. It is very few percentage in society. Uh, then I think the best answer is, not to give chance to them, mm -hmm. uh, not to give chance to them to hurt us, even though they did bad uh, bad things to us, even though they treat us badly. If we're not hurt, then uh, <laughs> there is no way for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is no way for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, that is the reason. Few people, I think. Uh, try to the treat badly in society. Most of people in society not to do that. And uh, today is finally I like to share with you. Today is very important day for us because the June full moon day means poson. Yeah. Sri Lanka it is the this is the day we received dhamma. Yeah. And it is good uh, example for us the how to a country the a bike a country treat to other country in good way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is good, uh, good example for us also. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Bhante Kaunsura. I really uh, love, you know, how you raise the question, why people uh, treat other people badly? I see it's, the, it's a great question. Uh, maybe that could be a, a PhD thesis uh, <laughs> for someone. <laughs> maybe the psychologists would be interested in this question, actually. Why? certain people treat other people badly right so uh, i think it's a great question I, I love that question so thank you so much uh okay where about Trudeau? you raised your hand again so what's the next story so the first thing in life is that we try to <clears throat> i think you got us stuck uh okay so 
Very well, Trudeau, you got a stack. Why do not associate you? with fool? Oh, can you can you see me now? Okay, we can hear you now. Yeah. The first thing is uh, that we the wise we try to cultivate ourselves to be the wise, and the wise do not associate with fools. So yeah. we want to avoid problems as much as possible. Um, but sometimes we live with family members and roommates, and sometimes it is unavoidable. When it is unavoidable, you must apply everything you know about dependent origination and try to get as much insight into the person. First and foremost, we don't take we don't we try not to take it personally by practicing the non-self. Uh, you know, we're oh, you know, we always say, I would never do that to you, so why would you do that to me? So it's always me, my, and I. We take possessions of such exterior offensiveness. Mm. And so when we no longer identify with that, we look, the second thing is to look past the behavior and into the person, past the behavior mm. and into the person. As you look into the person, you try to trace the root cause of the problem, tracing the links of influence, which, which is the practice of Paticca Samupada. At the same time, if you want to get analytical, you can practice Paticca Samupada within yourself. Why anger arises in me? Why is it arising so quickly? Mm. Um, and having said that, once you see the root cause of the problem, you you know the Buddha taught us have compassion. Well, how do we how do we have compassion? Is by and through deep understanding. Huh. Um, then when we talk about metta meditation, which is under the Visuti Maga, one of the four protective meditation function is that, you know, a lot of my young students, they're like, does it really work? <laughs> <laughs> does, uh, does some of these, uh, does it actually really work? The problem here is that number one, yes, it does. Why does it not work for you? is because you have yet to refine metta to the point where, you know, metta can serve as this wall, this very thick wall, so that when praise blame comes in, you can see past, you can automatically and quickly and instantaneously look to be into them and have supreme level of compassion. Um, also, anyone who is young and is curious, how do we cultivate deep understanding in humans? Number one, we study humans, which is psychology. Number two, study sociology, which is our society. Mm. And volunteer, go out and be with people. Old people, young people, death, old age, sickness, disease, decay. So that you see the first noble truth. Once you see the first noble truth, you have all this information to help you understand the human that is offending you. Mm. So I, you know, again, there is, you know, we have, have uh, this is me trying to tie all of the Theravadans recommendation, general recommendations, guidelines, um, and, and wise counsel into dealing with these types of, of matter. Now, there are some matters out there that is impossibly complicated problems within humans, complex uh, psychology, complex dark psychology, in people who have uh, DSM-5, ICD-10 um, uh, diagnoses, you know, working with people who are bipolar, schizophrenic, uh, deep, severe, major depressive depression. So, you know, you in order for you to deal with life effectively, one has to really dedicate the practice and the study of it diligently and, and patiently. There is no shortcut to this subject today you all are getting, you know, just the surface level of how to deal with these problems. But we suggest that, you know, you take it to heart, especially metta. And uh, subsequently, as you deepen your practice, um, you want to be able to see the three marks of existence in to the nature of the human and into the nature of the offense. The offense is subject to change. The person is impermanent the person is subject to change and rarely is it under our control anicca dukkha anatta <laughs> yeah i'd like to conclude my my talk 
um uh, but thank you for having me for a second round <laughs> yeah no thank you no th it's, it's it's beautiful understanding it's a wisdom even reflecting on the three forms of existence the uh, tilakna uh, if you if you can apply that uh, deep wisdom into this uh, uh, i think it will help you disengage from uh, the person who is treating you badly so that's a great wisdom uh, next uh, and also i would like to uh, remind our audience uh, uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to uh, write uh, to um, or you can make a comment in Facebook or YouTube, uh, or even here, there are some people on Zoom platform. If you have any questions, please type your question. Next, Bante Kusala, what is your next story? Well, Bante, um, I'd like to share that, you know, from my own family, I have gone through some um, traumatic experience, especially when we had to abandon our former home in, uh, northeastern Sri Lanka uh -huh. uh, because some people who who were angry at my father because he didn't let my sister marry one of these young men mm. I think he led a group of his friends to our home in the middle of the night on the day our uncle died mm. and threatened us with guns and uh, told us if we didn't leave uh, before the dawn they'll come back and kill all of us and they also um, blew my dad's head and it was really chaotic and i still uh, can recall those moments in my life i was just um, a 12 year old i guess and uh, so this so this can go in two directions we did leave that area uh, mm. and went back to my father's uh, hometown, Matara, uh, and we couldn't really see the bright side of it until it took us so long to, uh, you know, we had to start from scratch mm. um, to have uh, build a new house uh, and find schools and find friends. And somehow it turned out that, you know, our lives got better with this experience because we, are, we happened to live afterwards, you know, schools were better and it gave us good education. So what those people did uh, was useful in the end. But um, I became a monk and I always chose the forgiving as a way of treating these people or thinking about these people in my mind. Whereas my brother, he went into military and he wanted to take revenge from these people. Mm. He wanted to find each and every one of these people. So I kept reminding him, you know, that, okay, let karma take care of everything. You don't have to uh, accumulate new karma by looking for these people and uh, doing anything on them. So, but I, I knew that we all had to heal from these wounds, you know, um, because I trust that, you know, if you don't heal what hurt you, uh, you will be bleeding on people who didn't cut you. You know, I always think about this, you know, if you don't heal what hurt, what hurt you, you will be bleeding on people who didn't cut you because all your wounds are there with you. Mm -hmm. So these blueprints of psychological trauma can affect your public life and private life, social life and relationships, especially when you are not receiving the kind of treatments that you wish from other people, you may, your impulsive reaction will be based in nervousness, anger, um, and you may not know whether it is right or wrong until you are, you know, a little far behind your sanity lines. I don't know if that is the best, best way to put it. So, um, and I know that, you know, forgiveness can be used as a meditation for people, you know, together with friendliness meditation, radiating friendliness without boundaries. You are friends with all these people and you wish the best for these people. It's unfortunate later, um, about 20 years later, we started hearing from that same village, you know, we reclaimed that land and we built two-story house there. 
where my father is uh, living as a monk. And, uh, but we heard from the villagers that those people who uh, kind of invaded our house, one from, fell from a bus and died, and um, you know, one uh, got jailed and died there. Their lives turned out to be very miserable. We are not highlighting that to say that we are good people, uh, but I'm saying that you know, how the course of karma mm. show us in the end that you know uh, it will somehow uh, affect those people who are evil-minded because they carry something that they shouldn't carry. It's mm. poisonous to have that kind of anger. But they do things without uh, being wise, without uh, having much... Uh, respect to themselves mm. and therefore i think uh, what comes out of this is that you know we need to really uh, be quick to forgive these people and not accumulate more karma yeah. uh, because of what somebody did to you somehow looking at the brighter side and you know thinking oh they they did this they did something like this to me but let me survive this you know let me take this as a blessing um, and make let me make this wiser, not be a wounded person forever. Because you know, we have those two options: you can either get wounded, or you can get wiser and more compassionate, more kind, and use it as an opportunity to see the brighter side, and and find your growth through these experiences. I think. Uh, that's something I'd like to share with the, with the audience. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante Kusala, for sharing your own personal story, the family story. I think you did the right thing, advising your, 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 your brothers. And I'm glad that you glad to hear your brother did not take revenge. <laughs> I mean, if you're an army person, if you're a soldier, you can easily take revenge. You have all the skills to hurt other people. Uh, so that was a great advice. You saved your, your own brother from the karma, bad karma. <laughs> yeah, so uh, next, you know, I, I really, um, now there's a, a, a question from uh, our platform, uh, Zoom platform, uh, Anand Valley, but th th that is... Uh, the variable how to be happy in times of sorrow and which sutra should be read and practiced. Uh, thank you. So I think we will uh, talk about this, but this is uh, another topic, right? Uh, I want to stick to our uh, uh, topic uh, today, you know, the how to help uh, uh, everyone uh, when somebody goes through this kind of personal issues uh, in life. And I think uh, even today's stories uh, told by the venerable monks and nuns uh, and the wisdoms, the skills they, uh, they have shared with us, these are, uh, uh, in, uh, these are enough to handle any negative uh, situation. I'm kind of curious to, uh, to know from uh, Bhante Sunita. I know Bhante Sunita, you, you have done psychology and uh, uh, I, even that's what Bhante comes to us, you know, why people have this habit of hurting others? You know what's going on. You also interested in psychology. You analyze a lot. Do you have anything? You also uh, a philosopher too. You have this philosophy mind. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, uh, Bhante Saranapala and all the other venerable monks, uh, and letting me also uh, uh, give my ideas about this topic. It is very beautiful topics, and I like that very much. I was to share something that uh, actually uh, when some uh, when you know someone treats you uh, badly, uh, my response for that is not I'm not react to any negative situation. So it is uh, very simple for me: uh, be mindful and mm. be kind to yourself. It is very definite. Uh, uh, that is my practice and philosophy. Uh, and also, I, I never wish any harm to even uh, my worst enemy. Mm. I don't think that I have enemy because uh, each and every one whom I, uh, I met, 
teach me something very important uh, for my life. So that is why I got uh, I understand even a very very dark side even very dark side uh, there is uh, something behind uh, there is you know uh, light side also mm. and behind every enemy uh, there is a, a very good friend or mm. uh, behind every negative situation there is a great lesson that we can uh, learn from it so that is why I always, uh, you know, yes, a oh, few days ago, I wrote a kind of poem that uh, about suffering and hardship that I have uh, experienced in my life. So those are the moments that, uh, you know, uh, learned a very deep meaning of my life. And uh, those events and uh, situations and also people teach me a lot about my life. And I can remember when I was a teen monk, I, I think it, uh, it was, uh, I was uh, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And one of my, uh, you know, classmates at my Pirvena, uh, he was very jealous at me uh, because he was the best, uh, student at that class before I attend to that class. And then uh, after my attending to that class, he was the second. So from the day, from that day, he did uh, the, you know, he treated me very, very badly. So anyhow, I, I was, even though I helped him to, you know, improve his uh, English and I helped him um, you know, do, do homework, uh, his English homework as well. One day, uh, one evening, uh, he took a wooden, uh, you know, bar, wooden pole. Mm. It's very heavy. I, I, I got to know that later. He tried to even hit me, but uh, I don't scared at that. What I was doing, I was laughing at the situation at and also at him, and uh, somehow he couldn't do any any harm to me because I knew that something in me I have very powerful, and he also know that uh, I I was practicing some martial arts, and yeah, uh, from that from that moment I experienced that. There is something in me that very powerful that is uh, not allowing any others to hurt me because I have the capacity, I have the power uh, over my emotion and thoughts. I have the, uh, uh, I have that control. Uh, there are many, many stories that I can, I can share, but I want to, uh, uh, I want to share that what I learned from that. Mm. Uh, I don't allow anyone to treat me badly because I know that is their problem. It is mm. not. Mm. I have that uh, shield uh, in me. Mm. Uh, the behavior, uh, you know, treating me badly, it's their behavior. Treating mm. me the best positive way is my behavior. Mm. So, so that is how I uh, apply that uh, principle in my life. Uh, if someone do so to me, I know he's having some issues in his life, as Abante Kusala said, as Venerable uh, Chidao uh, said, and treating him or her back, it is not the way I treat him. Mm. I know also if a dog bite you, I don't bite it back. So why I do that? Uh, there is a, 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 I always apply mindfulness and kind, kindness towards me, especially. Uh, and also there is a like story, uh, like portrait in my deep uh, level of my, my heart that is uh, the, 
before Bante Kusala shared that uh, topic with uh, uh, Brahmin Akkosa. Mm. Very, very beautiful story for me. And then uh, what I want to uh, say our audience, uh, don't allow others to, others, uh, others to treat you bad. You have the capacity, you have the ability not to accept it. Mm. See your ability, see your power and accept that and respect that. Then only, only you are the person who allow them to treat you bad. So you have that capacity. And also hatred does not cease by hatred at any, any time in anywhere. Mm. Hatred by loving kindness, only by loving kindness and understanding. So we can apply these uh, principles in our life daily and every moment, every moment. There is no uh, negative people. There is no positive people in my life. Mm. It, everyone teach me be a great, great lesson to me. So that uh, I, I'm thinking that who, uh, who was the person uh, you know, help very much to the Bodhisattva to become a Buddha. Mm. He's the Devadatta. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it, no matter who treat me badly, I think there is a, a Kalyana myth in that person. Mm. I, I take only that part, you know, bright side of that. So that is how I, I am happy every moment, no matter what uh, what kind of uh, you know situation, negative or positive. I'm always happy. I'm always like this. Thank you very much, Bhante. Oh, what a what a great advice! You know, every enemy should be treated as a your own kailan mitra for helping you to go towards the light, not not to go towards the darkness. <laughs> they are the people who push me. They are the yes. people. Push me forward. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Bhante Sunita. Uh, Bhante Kusala, you raised your hand again. Uh, what's in your mind? We have just a few more minutes. This will be short. You know, uh, how do we deal with the energy of uh, frustration that we feel sometimes? You know, I think this is a continuation of what Bhante Sunita just mentioned. Mm. Uh, so one time I remember. Uh, uh, living in a monastery where uh, monks had a nature of upsetting me, uh, frustrating me. So instead of turning back toward them, I decided to go and create a walking path, uh, digging the ground and using that energy to make something productive. Mm. And in the end, I remember the nearby creek getting flooded and receiving a gift of free camping chairs with all those you know, all the rubble, the debris that came. Mm. So that way I realized, you know, uh, you can be, you know, you can reflect back and, uh, you know, appreciate that you didn't charge back. You didn't uh, use all those uh, skills that you can, you can have, like abusive language or uh, negative energy. Instead, you used it to make something productive. Mm. So for those people who are dealing with someone treating you badly, go uh, into the garden and dig the earth and maybe start preparing your garden so that at the end you will have some beautiful flowers or vegetables coming and you can appreciate them later. Yeah, Thank you. That is, that, is a, uh, that is a beautiful advice. And I said that's how we should be uh, doing during our uh, tough time. And also it's, it's something like, uh, you know, I, I think maybe um uh most of you were not here in north america in 90s uh when i came to this country uh in mid 90s you know i used to go to school as a typical buddhist monk i would walk on the street and uh i would take the public transportation and you know how people sometimes honk at you you know and they, they scream and even they show a kind of finger you know <laughs> so I don't want to you I want to say that <laughs> name of the <laughs> finger. So uh, so I would always think like this, you know, they are behaving like that because they don't know who I am. 
they don't know what kind of life I live. And then I shift my attention to something positive, the good people uh, who actually even waited for me in the intercept intersections uh, just to have conversation with me. So I think uh, uh, we all have some sort of negativities, negative stories. We have uh, faced uh, difficult times, people mistreated us, people uh, maybe physically abused us, uh, but somehow we practice Dhamma to stop this journey of abuse in the cycle of life. And uh, uh, that's why I think we are uh, promoting kindness, you know, kindness is very important. There are uh, uh, unkind people and that's why they are uh, behaving like this. So um, I said Dhamma is a great tool and if you can understand the Dhamma, if you can apply uh, uh, this uh, Dhamma into practice, it will be of immense benefit to us. It will be the source of the strength for us to uh, face all the difficulties and problems, uh, mistreatments uh, in the society. And it's also the meditation. This is also like, uh, I think these are challenges for us. These are the uh, uh, critical times for us. Our strength comes from the Dhamma and to measure uh, how strong you are in the practice of Dhamma, it will be shown uh, during uh, this kind of difficult times. Uh, like how calm you can remain when somebody uh, uh, treats you badly. <laughs> I said, there's also a beautiful story like that. You know, I don't want to go there. It's also coming from, from a, a sutra in the Majjhima Nikaya. Uh, so uh, maybe we can have more discussions. Uh, we have come to the end of the program. And uh, so let us uh, wind this up. Uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, 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 Venerable Saranapala from uh, Vancouver uh, uh, to recite the Ova the Patimokka verses. <clears throat> sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo tasse bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasse. Sab papas akar nang kuselas up sampada Sachit pariyo dap nang etang buddha nasas nang Kanti paremang tapo titika Nibbanang paremang vadanti buddha Nahi pabjito parup gati Samano hoti parang we hate Yanto Anupavado Anupagato Pati Mokhe Chesangvero Matanyuta Chebatasming Pantanche Sayanasanang Adichitte Chayogo Etang Buddha Nesasanang Sadhu 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 Thank you, Venerable Sanar Palatir, for beautifully reciting the Fatimokka verses. It was truly beautiful, relaxing. And that's the best way to end our bi-weekly discussion today. And I'm truly, truly grateful to all of you, to all our Venerable monks and nuns uh, for coming together on Zoom platform to share your uh, wisdom with our audiences. And also, it's also inspiring for me personally, you know, after listening to your stories, and I 
I'm also learning so much, you know, by doing this, running this program, it actually is me actually who is really benefiting from this my weekly discussion. I'm pretty sure uh, our friends uh, who are watching us, they are also benefiting from this. So I would like to uh, give you the blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha for your health and safety, for your physical and, and emotional well-being. May devas, celestial beings, continue to protect and guard you with the divine blessings uh, to do this uh, unique service, Dhamma service uh, around the world. And also may all blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha continue to be with all our friends who joined in the Zoom platform and also who watched us on Facebook and YouTube live. And may devas uh, continue to protect and guard all of you for, with divine blessings. And may all sentient beings be happy. Sabbe Sata Bhavanta Sukitata. And I uh, will see you all in two weeks' time. Until then, all of you stay well and happy. Good night. <laughs> Keep <it> smiling. <laughs>